Hey, welcome to Make Live. I'm Becky Stern. And I'm Matt Richardson. Tonight we're talking all about the Arduino. We have the Secret Knock Gumball Machine by Steve Hofer. And Colin Cunningham is here in the studio to show us his MidiVox Music Shield. You're not going to want to miss it, so stick around. This episode of Make Live is brought to you by DigiKey. Thanks for joining us on our first ever episode of Make Live. It's our show and tell. It kind of brings the magazine mm -hmm. to life. Uh, every other Wednesday, we're going to be broadcasting in HD here from New York City. And um, the show's live, so that means you can participate with each other and with us. So ask questions in the chat and uh, tag your tweets with Make Live if you yeah. want to ask questions. Yeah, yeah. And uh, every show we're going to have a theme, and this week our theme is all about Arduino. Um, in fact, uh, Make Volume 25 is all about Arduino. There's a ton of Arduino projects in Make Volume 25, so we thought it was perfect to have the first show all about the Arduino. Mm -hmm. It's a very popular microcontroller platform if you don't already know about it. We have some here on the other camera we can show you. So you can just plug sensors into it and, um, and LEDs and uh, speakers and kind of uh, write a little code on your computer and sense the world around you, either to make something light up or make noise or um, move a motor. Yeah. It's really cool. And that one was the, that's the Arduino Uno. That was released just this past summer at uh, Maker Faire New York. Uh, and we, there's plenty of different kinds of Arduinos. It's an open source platform. So anyone can make any kind of version of Arduino that they want. Uh, for different applications, or maybe they want to make a smaller version, or they just yeah. want to change one little thing. So, for instance, this is the LilyPad Arduino. It's um, it's designed to be sewn to a garment or used in very uh, like wearable applications. It's got these big conductive pads here that are designed to be sewn with conductive thread, and it's really thin and doesn't have any pointy bits on the back. And then this one's the Arduini, which is this tiny, it's like a little caterpillar. Um, and the Atmel chip actually sits underneath it on your. Um, circuit, so it's a very small footprint if you're looking for a teeny tiny one to embed in a project. Here's one that I made myself. <laughs> so over the last five years, Arduino has made it really easy for anybody to get started with electronics, which is why we love it so much and why it's in so many make projects. Um, the hardware and software is constantly being updated, as a matter of fact. Uh, we, we've, had, we've seen so many different iterations, and in fact, there's this new one here. This is the uh, SMD version of the Arduino. Yeah, so I guess they ran out of, uh, or like the world supply of these dip package, um, like at, at Mega 328s are running out. So um, instead of making hungry Arduino fans wait for their Arduinos, they just made this new board that uses the surface mount version of the chip, which I guess is easier to find. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's see, we have two makers on deck, Steve Hofer's first up. And um, we welcome Steve via Skype. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? There we go. We have Steve's audio. There we go. How are you, Steve? <laughs> Hi, guys. I'm doing great. Can you tell us a little bit about the gumball machine? Um, the gumball machine is, uh, if I don't drop it here, it's, <laughs> um, it's a gumball machine, but instead of putting money into it to get gumballs out, you uh, give a secret knock, and it'll uh, spit out a gumball for you. So we have the other one. We have the version that they built for, that's the acrylic version. It's really nice. You can see how it works. And we have this wooden version here that the interns at the Make Labs made. Um, and um, I'm wondering if you'll share with us what the secret knock is. The secret knock. Well, I don't know. It's a secret. <laughs> um, no, it's the one we always call shaving a haircut. It's the... Okay. All right. Let's see. You want to put, yeah, you got that? All right, good. Oh. <laughs> it's trying really hard. Oh. <laughs> I think we jammed it. Uh, we, oh, were, no. we were messing around with it before. We may have. Uh... <laughs> no problem. It's all better now. All right, let's okay. Try. Ready? Give me a pink one. Oh, you got the red light. Oh, I got the red light. Okay, it gives me the red light when you get the knock wrong. One more time. <gasps> Okay, I got a green one. That's great. Awesome. So, I mean, it's crazy. Like, how does it work? How, how is it actually, um, like, receiving the signal of my knock in the first place? So, um, it uses a piezoelectric uh, buzzer, actually, um, to read the knocks. Uh, piezoelectric uh, crystals are pretty cool because if you apply electricity to them, 
they'll vibrate, or if you vibrate them, they'll generate electricity. So we just turn it around and we stick it in the face of the, uh, uh, the little knock area of the gumball machine and we plug it into the analog ends of our Arduino and it can sense when there's a spike on that uh, channel and can then, you know, read the timing of, of the knocks and figure out whether you, uh, you gave the right knock or not. And you have a really cool you have a really cool algorithm that makes it so you can knock it at any at any tempo. Where did you get the um, the idea to make the secret knock thing in the first place? Um, originally, I got my I got my first Arduino because I had heard all the great things about it, and uh, I didn't really know what to do with it. So I was looking around the Arduino website, um, and I found uh, you know it said knock detector, and I thought, ooh, and and for some reason I just thought it's a secret knock detector. I don't know why I thought that. It didn't say secret. Uh, but I looked at the I looked at the sample and it was just a it just detected individual knocks and I started thinking about it a bit. And I thought, well, why couldn't it be a secret knock detector? Um, so, you know, I sat down and I and I bashed out the code we needed to uh, to take you know that basic knock detector and and make it something a little bit more uh, interesting. Super cool. But from what I understand, this isn't the first iteration of your Arduino endeavors with secret knocks. Is that correct? <laughs> No, the first one was, uh, the first thing I thought, well, I've got a secret knock detector. What should I do with it? And the obvious answer was to make it a, uh, hook it up to the lock on my door. So when you give the secret knock, you'll automatically get entrance. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that was a lot of fun, uh, but uh, not the most practical thing in the world. And uh, when it came time for uh, Maker Faire this spring, um, I decided, you know, I wanted to do something that was a little bit more interactive, that really got people interested because, you know, there's there's tons of really excited people who come to Maker Faire. They want an interactive thing that'll really get them going. And I didn't think really door locks were a real big motivator. So I thought about it and I thought, what do people really like? And people like candy. So <laughs> I thought the obvious answer was to make uh, a gumball machine uh, that was that was locked with a secret knock. Super neat. Well, I, I agree that candy is a lot more visually enticing than a, a door lock when you're talking about an exhibit right. at Maker Faire. Um, I opened up the front panel here so you guys at home can see the piezo sensors back here right underneath where you knock. There's a red LED to tell you when you've got it wrong and a green one to tell you when you've got it right. And then the Arduino board's inside here underneath this, this little guy. Oops, sorry. And um, I don't know. Uh, the mechanism inside, though, is really quite clever. Steve, could you share with us how you came to making that? Um, that actually, that took a bunch of work. I originally thought when I thought, oh, gumballs, you know, they're round, they can't be too complicated. Um, I thought they would just flow like water. It turns out that's completely incorrect. Uh, <laughs> they, they, they'll get jammed up. It was really, really hard to get one and exactly one gumball uh, every time uh, the machine ran. Um, so the first, the first thing that I looked at was after my first attempts failed, uh, I went and dug in the old, uh, went to the U.S. Patent Office uh, because they have drawings of, of all these things and looked up gumball machines. And it turns out they're really, really complicated inside. And I wanted something that I could uh, machine out of acrylic, uh, you know, for a visible, a visual thing uh, at Maker Faire. Um, and none of their designs really worked. So, you know, I just got off the foam core and the construction foam, and I started, you know, I started with this one, which is, you know, just starts out really basically with just uh, a little uh, hole for a gumball. This would work once and then wouldn't work again. I see. So um, it's like held at an axis there, and then the gumball goes into the slot, and then that thing has to turn to dump the gumball down the chute. Is that correct? Right. There's a little there's a little funnel on either side, and it funnels the gumball in, and the gumball would fall in, and then it would rotate down, and dump it out in the chute. Now this worked. This did work great once, and then all the other gumballs on top of it would be like crammed in there. So we needed a way to like stir them up uh, to try to encourage them back into the hole. So I did some more prototypes. I had this one. Which I which would have worked great, except when it rotates around, the gumballs get crammed up in there, uh, and it jams up. Um, and I tried some other designs. Uh, I actually don't remember why this one didn't work, but it didn't work very well. Uh, so eventually, we we came up with um, this is sort of a cutaway view 
we still have the regular disc in there with the, the gumball falls into. And then we have these two offset discs, which as they rotate around, um, sort of stir the balls that are in and, and sort of encourage one to fall uh, into a little thing so it can rotate out. Oh, great. And, so that's uh, the kind that's inside the machine we have here. And yeah, this, one, do you have your yeah. um, the plastic one there, right? Do you want to show us how yeah. it works? Sure. Um, there's a little servo attached to it. Uh, you can see right in the middle there. And um, if you give the secret knock, oops, except I think, uh, there we go. I lost power for a second. Um, so if you give the secret knock, uh, you should see a, a gumball fall into the slot and then uh, come out the tray. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like Pac-Man, like regurgitating food into the mouth of a baby bird. <laughs> That's great. Um, so that, that particular prototype you're, you're holding there, did you uh, end up laser cutting that? How did you do that? Um, I had hoped to laser cut it. Uh, I ended up not having enough time to, um, to get the turnaround with the uh, uh, company to laser cut it. Um, and I don't have a laser cutter myself, unfortunately. So uh, I cut all this with power tools, wow. um, which is a bit of a challenge. But uh, if you take your time and you go really slowly, uh, you know, you can, you can do it. Um, it's uh, acrylic looks very forgiving. You can have some seam allowances and some gaps, and you won't see them without looking very closely. Uh, however, it does like to chip and break and shows fingerprints like nobody's business. Right. Oh, yeah. Someone now, in the chat wants to know if there are other neat, any neat candy-related projects in the works from you, other ones. <laughs> um, not yet, but um, in general, I don't like uh, preventing people from accessing candy. I want to get people <laughs> to have more access to candy. So perhaps a, a kind of Probably, flowing like water uh, candy dispenser. A candy cannon, I think, would be, uh, would be more what I'd really like to see. Mm -hmm. Someone wants to know how uh, you recognize, you do the knock recognition independent of the tempo. Um, so when it listens to the tempo of the knock, when it listens to the knock and it records the discrete time between them, so if, you know, it's 300 milliseconds here and 600 here and, and whatever, and it records that, and after a long enough gap of time, it decides that, oh, well, I guess I must have got a complete knock. And it sends it, and it processes all this data that it collected. Um, the the thing that it does is it finds the longest gap, so maybe it's a second and a quarter long gap, and it makes that essentially a whole note. Mm -hmm. You know, it makes it a value of one, and then it it applies the the division of that, of what it applied to that one uh, number to get it to one, to all the other. Uh, spaces in the knock. So then everything, it's like quarter notes and whole notes and 16th notes, uh, essentially. And uh, that'll normalize it. Uh, I so, see. so it takes like whatever quickly. time scale you do and just kind of shrinks it or expands it to fit the one that's in the memory. Right. Cool. That's cool. Someone's suggesting that maybe when you get the knock wrong, you could uh, have it uh, squirt them with water or something, some sort of punishment for getting the knock wrong. I think not getting candy is a punishment enough. <laughs> but, Especially um, Maker Faire. But then you get to try again, which actually might be more fun because then right. you still get candy and you get to like play, right? Is the, is, was that your experience at Maker Faire that everyone just wanted to play with it anyway? Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Um, I ended up, uh, this is not the same one that I had at Maker Faire. The one at Maker Faire pretty much got beat up uh, because I completely underestimated uh, what children will do for candy. <laughs> uh, especially when they see people punching a machine and getting candy out of it. Right. Um, mm. so. See, maybe a punching bag that burns as many calories as it gives right. you for the, for the kids oh, and the crazy we energy. Well, thanks, Steve, for joining us. That was so great. Um, we answered a few questions. Oh, if you've you got more, Steve said he'll hang out in the chat room for the rest of the time if you want to ask him questions. And um, you can learn how to build your own secret knock gumball machine by picking up Make Volume 25. Yeah, the, the whole project's in there. It's laid out, and there's some great illustrations. The um, code, I mean, I had to reprogram this guy when it came here, so, like, the code's all online, and it's super fun. Yeah, yeah, it's a great project. Yeah, so thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. All right, thank you, guys.